Okay. <laughs> That's new. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode seven of Behind the Seams, where we sit and sort of pick apart what's happened on this week's episode of Great British Sewing Bee. So um, my name is Sarah Payne. I'm also joined today by Alistair from the House of Alistair. Hello. And Samantha from Just Bold Fabrics. Hello, my darling. And we're also joined, our special guest today is uh, dressmaking and bag making extraordinaire, <laughs> Tracy Dennis from the Owl and Sewing Cap. Hello, darling. Hi. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, of course. So I'm Tracy and have a company called Owl and Sewing Cat. And at the Owl and Sewing Cat, we make a variety of different patterns and kits. So we do some dressmaking, it's kind of simplest dressmaking for beginners, really. Um, and then lots of home decor and bags. So a whole variety of different patterns that we put together, which we then bring to Create and Craft um, as kits and patterns as well. And we also have a monthly subscription. So we send out in the post kits to people who love sewing. So everyone to get a nice surprise in the post very nice very nice so you're here to give us your sort of uh, your take on what's been happening um up till now on the sewing bee but before we crack on with that we have two very exciting uh competitions okay going forward so the first one is the gorgeous sam has um given us some uh, goodies that you will be able to win there is a prize for uh, YouTube and there is a prize for the Facebook channel. So all you need to do to win these particular prizes is comment at the bottom um, when you've watched this, obviously. So uh, you need to tell us who are your top three contestants because obviously each week we're telling you what ours are, but we want to hear who yours are. And you will be in with the chance of winning a bundle worth 50 pounds of uh, gorgeous patterns and glamorous fabric so that's our first competition as i said just comment underneath this post and uh, we will draw the winner and let you know next week who's actually won that so thank you sam for um donating some oodles of gorgeousness uh, and the second prize now this is actually launched today on the creating craft facebook page and this is a big one this is a big competition you are going to have the opportunity to design your own fabric and see it sold on create and craft okay i'll say that again design some fabric and see it sold my word that's amazing a lot of um people who are on the channel don't even get to do that themselves so you'll also win a 250 pound sewing bundle as well as see your fabric on air um and basically in order to win that you need to go to the create and craft facebook page there is a post on there that's gone up thursday morning click on that and it will take you through and that's where you put all your information to take part and actually what we need is you to upload a drawing or design on that entry form so click on the click on the logo sorry click on the post and it will take you through and then upload there and you could well see your fabric um on tv and who knows it might be one of us <laughs> Ooh. Right, so that's our two competitions that we've got. Let's uh, actually crack on and talk about this uh, week's sewing bee. So it was episode seven and it was winter week, which actually has been appropriate lately, hasn't it, with the weather. But basically there were three challenges this week. So our pattern challenge was the lumberjack shirt. Um, we had the um, the chat. The second challenge was to make a garment from some scarves, and then the third challenge was a party dress. Okay, so we're going to go through these one at a time. We're going to go through these these um, actual challenges uh, and talk about what we thought. So the first of all was the men's flannel challenge. Before we get too far, um, last week. Um, Alistair commented on the fact that the quality sometimes of the samples that they're showing us are not brilliant. So I just wanted to, I printed this one out. I am running out of ink. That should be red. I'm running out of red ink. But can you see the collar here? 
under the neck. <coughs> that is not lying flat. When we come to Andrew's outfit, bless him, he had the similar thing. They, they commented on him, but not on that. So I'm just going to leave that there now, plant that little seed in your brain. So first of all, Tracy, if we come to you first as our special guest, Thank you. what did you think of the Lumberjack challenge? Who do you think did well? And, you know, did you agree with our eventual winner, which, which was Serena? Yeah, I mean, I think on this occasion I did. She's obviously is a very competent sewer. She's, um, you know, a, a clever girl. She's used to following instructions. She's a medical student. And so, you know, she's used to following the processes through. She chose a fabric that um, was kind of good for the job, suited the job. There was nothing stand out or amazing. I mean, to be really picky, I did feel that her buttons were a bit small in proportion. Just a tiny little thing there. But yeah, I think, you know, hers was. I don't think... I don't think it was a terribly difficult project to do if you are, you know, a sewer. It, there was nothing too hard with it. The fabric isn't, if, as long as you pick the right fabric, it's not hard to work with. Just don't steam the life out of it, you know. But, um, yeah, and it can be thick when you're doing the collar and cuffs. Um, I think it was such a shame for her that she didn't finish again. You know, she got, what she did was so good, but again, was so far short of finishing. Um I'm trying to work out why she's so slow, but it, obviously this week they're focusing on the cutting. She's obviously really worried about that at that point and she's too slow to kick off and get going, which is a shame because she's a really good sewer. Um, but yeah, I mean, and Andrew's was obviously a bit of a mess, wasn't it? To be, to be fair, probably the worst one. Um, I didn't particularly like Rebecca's choice of fabric. Um, I didn't think, I think she gave herself a hard challenge um, to do. She did that small red, uh, pinky red sort of check. Um, I really like Rafe's um, Rafe's um, cut and yoke on the bias right from the start. I kept thinking, just put it on the bias. I know it's difficult to know whether you should or shouldn't go off piste on the rules because sometimes you get they seem to judge and go, oh, that's really good. You bought your own design element into it, and then other times they go, oh no, you have to stick to the to the instructions. So it's hard to know where to go. But I did think it looked better actually with that bias cut otherwise there's not really a lot of point in having the yoke there if you don't see it at all then why even bother putting a yoke on it's it's mm. not really much point in doing it so if you're going to do a yoke make it a statement piece with either adding you know a bit of contrast stitch, twin needle stitching or something like that or put it on the bias um so yeah i really like that he did that but obviously technically he kind of struggled a bit mm. so sam you know rafe had, had been your favorite a lot of the the way through but this was a pattern challenge and there's some and they said they wanted to see the yoke pattern match so going off piste with that how did you how did you I, love, I love the fabric i loved his <clears throat> you know the color choice and i absolutely agree with um I've got crazy <laughs> I shouldn't forget your name because that was okay. my name. Um, yeah. I agree with everything that Tracy's just said. Certainly with the, you know, with the yoke. I thought I thought it was beautiful. Um, Rebecca, what a mess. Um, Andrew, you know, I don't know what a mess. And of course, Serena, she she comes through yet again with perfection. So uh, just amazing, isn't it? Really, when you think about it. And somebody had a uh, buttonholes missing. Was that Clara? Buttonholes missing, the collar yeah, missing. She didn't, she didn't do her buttonholes and Rafe didn't open up his buttonholes. Was, I think, do you know what's happening with her psychologically? She's getting too comfortable again. She's getting too overconfident. She needs to calm down. Barry. I yeah. believe that's my attitude with her at the minute. She, she kind of irritated me this week. <laughs> Just saying. Because she's capable of so much, I think, that um, yeah, it's disappointing. She's, she's, she's getting overconfident. She needs to focus more. She's taking her eye off the ball. So, Alistair, what did you think of the, um, the, the lumberjacks? Well, again, I agree with um, Tracy. Um, <clears throat> the whole purpose of having a yoke, I mean... <sighs> A lumberjack shirt, unless it's shaped or it's a different colour or it, it just doesn't... When you actually looked at um, on the back where they had uh, matched up um, the actual um, uh, checks on some of them, 
it just it just looked it just looked a bit messy because you saw that um it was slightly ski whiff on one and they were they were praising the fact that they had matched the check yes going down it was matched but in actual fact across it wasn't and it didn't mm -hmm. it, it sort of the it was just it was it was just wrong rafe had the the, the best idea which was in actual fact with that yoke to cut that on the bias and make it a feature um because that just eliminates so many things and it, it looks far more pleasing to the eye actually one person that we haven't um mentioned an actual fact um is damien and i actually thought he did really really mm. well on this one and <clears throat> it was just the fact that you know he had used some nice um buttons and i just thought he you know he has been reading the patterns and he is slightly getting better but technically i think he's actually one to watch and it's yes. interesting and it's interesting that you know when you guys were talking that he just didn't with, with I feel as if you know obviously the show is um predominantly focusing on a, a select few um and I just think that he's an actual fact I think he's potentially quite a um a contender now mm. a real oh, exactly. contender it was can his episode remember, wasn't it can you remember Sarah um Alistair and Tracy, Andrew, what was going on there with his collar and everything <laughs> yes, else? He had, that, he, he had that big lump at the top, but as I say, that one, the, the, this is how you should do it, that had that as well. So, you know, it can, it can happen. But uh, Rebecca's collar was even worse because she, her collar wasn't central. So when she buttoned it, it had to be over. But I was quite surprised when Patrick commented about the small button. And he seems surprised. Now I'm sure I've seen that on the top of, of yeah, shirts. Sure. The very top one sure. is a small button. And he's yeah. tailoring. So I was quite surprised yeah. he'd never seen that before. Well, no, in that, we see an actual fact, Savile Row. So I just just very, very briefly. So we have the good side of Savile Row and we have the bad side of Savile Row. So all the tailors, they're really quite snobby. So for instance, when I when I had my studio, when people, customers used to come in, they used to say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm here to see Alistair. And they were so um, charming, shall we say, oh, the dressmakers in the back. That's all I used to get. And it was just like, but on Savile Row, so there's um, where all the tailors are on this side, where all the tailor in houses, where um, Patrick actually has his shop, Norden and Sons. And um, literally, when you look over, you have the... Um, the people who they pr profess to be playing at um, uh, making suits and what have you. So you have all, mainly the, all the ready to wear. You have Richard James there. You have Oswald Botang. Now, there are so many um, shirt outlets on the wrong side of the street. I'm surprised that Patrick, on his way in, because I used to meet him every morning, um, literally, I'm surprised he hasn't seen those kind of things because the Italian shirt sometimes they actually have two buttons and they have a cluster that go down so it's two 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 and two and they're very small buttons very surprised there you go a little bit of gossip there thank what you what surprised me was that when it comes to you know they're always short of time and yet they all sit their hands sewing the buttons on and this is a shirt that you see on the high street just put use your sewing machines spend the time getting your buttons in the right position because that's the thing that makes or breaks it at the end and it's not that difficult to do is to lay it down and mark exactly where your buttons need to go spend the time getting the position right and then attach them with the sewing machine instead of I mean, nearly 10 buttons is on on these shirts so they probably wasted half an hour sitting sewing those buttons yeah. on just do it under the machine but get the position yeah. right with your buttons it's like nobody told them that their sewing machine will allow them to sew buttons on you know a lot of sewing machines have got foot for it right so let's crack on and look at the next challenge which was this one so this is our transformation challenge and um, they had to take up to five shirt uh, sorry five scarves and make a, an item of clothing with it so what we had in this scenario was um fairy one which is this one which i have to say i really did like that one then we had andrew then we had rebecca Serena, Rafe, and Damien. So here was Damien. So the, these sort of the top two and the bottom one 
And I mean, they didn't comment on the bow. Esme didn't comment on the bow not being part of the outfit, which she does on the last one with Andrew, which I thought was a little harsh, as she's the queen of the bows. But Sam, what did you think about Farry's outfit on that one? You know, the real instrument. I love the colours. I like the way she put it together because it looked like you could wear it mm -hmm. um, compared to everybody else's. That looked like they came out of a bin. So, yeah, to be honest, I was impressed. I was very impressed. Uh, Damien, lordy, lordy, lordy. Could he not be bothered? Huh? Could he Could he not be asked? Because what was going on there with the flowers here and the flowers there? But hers, yeah, she did well. She did well. Yes. Well, Alistair, you know, we we often say about Damien, don't we? What do we say about Damien? <laughs> Keep him out of the blinking trim room. He yes. should be... In fact, we should chain him to his blinking <laughs> desk. He's just... He just... Honestly, that man going around, he's just, I just need something, I just need something. And then uh. when he came back and he had those plastic acrylic diamantes, <laughs> I'm sorry, the BBC should at least be able to afford at least some... <laughs> Check uh, knockoffs of Shirovsky. I'm sorry, but literally, it was just it was awful. I mean, Andrews, I just wrote down Ewok. That was just hideous. I absolutely hated it. Now, one thing I want mm. to say is the fact that uh, actually Rafe actually did say this because the thing is, is that yes. Adam is the king of draping. And he says, where's Adam when you need him about the draping? And I was like, yes, because he should be here. He said something like he's going to, he's going to channel him, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. But it didn't work. I mean, literally all he did was put a few slits through and then just sort of feeded a few scarves around. I mean, yeah, he had his colour palette, but it was just so boring. It was just... And also these challenges that they're setting them, these... these um, the the set the second challenge it seems to be quite samey we had sarongs now we've had scarves then they have this then they have that then they have what have you it's just like come up with something different you know give them a go to a jumble cell and buy everything and anything you can find and don't limit somebody to the fact oh you have to use scarves and you can pick up to a, a certain uh, number of them i mean literally i mean I damien's but the point you're making is uh, the filling in a gap. Um, and do you know what? What you've just said, psychologically, it's like, right, is that all the materials we've got to work with? This is so boring. What can we do with it? Because that's what you're saying, Alistair. It's mm -hmm. boring, isn't it? So it's not really that inspiring, is it, really? And there you go. Those are the end results of boring. Yeah. I mean, apart Casey, from Farry's, yeah. sorry, apart from Farry's, would they actually personally or would they put their own uh, uh, daughter or wife or anyone in any of those garments to seriously walk down the street? Because I tell you what, if you put me in one of them, I wouldn't leave the house. <laughs> Sorry, Tracy. Okay, what did you what did you think, my darling? Um, well, I mean, again, it's a hard challenge, isn't it? And you know, it's that same old thing that half of them. I don't think you could even get into them if you wanted to. They seem to yeah. just pin stuff around the stand and not worry about actually getting in or out of it. Like you say, Farris was really lovely, and you could get into it, and she had thought about that. But I do feel it's a bit of a tired challenge. What might be really, I mean, it would be really good to have one challenge where they've all got an even playing field. So they're all doing the same pattern and the same fabric. And then you really would see their skills then. Just give them a plain cotton shirt and they all make the same one. And then you can judge everyone evenly. Whereas That's what Alistair's, Alistair's brought that up time and time again. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's important. The thing is with Bake Off, yeah. And with uh, other um, commercial entities that they have, they do that on their other programs. And it, it's such a, an unfair advantage, especially when they're going to choose different um, fabrics, um, when they all, you know, run to the wall and it's just, you know, they just have a frenzy about, oh, this, oh, touchy, you know, and what have you. And then suddenly you can't, you can't honestly critique somebody. You can do that for the final challenge, but when you're doing a technical challenge, you know, give them all the same. They've got yeah. all the same to yeah. work with, and then it's an even playing field. 
Yeah. But then, Tracy, I don't know what your feelings are, but literally our feelings are the fact that the first and second challenge doesn't seem to be taken into account. Nothing. It's just literally the end thing. They have that momentary little bit where they're with Joe uh, Lyson and they're sort of saying, well, who's in trouble? Why bother yeah. having that in? Because you don't bloody use it. No, and then and the end challenge, they've had every opportunity to practice that. And if you're going to do it in live TV, you do it over and over and over again. So, you know, you don't, you pay, we don't see all the times that it's gone wrong and they've ditched it and they've ditched it again. So I don't think it's really necessarily judging that well either. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a bit of the transformation one's always a bit of a, a funny one, isn't it? Because very rare, there's very rare times when there's something that you would actually wear, as you say, out of the house or that you could get in and out of. So, it's yeah, and we often we, often, we have found that people who have come last are then sort of garment of the week. So, they are technically sewer of the week. And then people who've won one of those earlier challenges has actually gone home. So, you know, what, it, what is the point of that? I know it's a, this is an entertainment show as well, but I think sometimes we're finding that the judging in this one, I don't know whether I'm noticing it more because I'm getting to talk about it afterwards. I'm finding it's very, very biased. And we're going to go on to the last challenge now, um, which I. We, really annoyed me. <laughs> it really annoyed me. I have had a word with myself this morning to try and, you know, calm myself and it's not worked because the last challenge was the winter dress and we obviously had garment of the week and spoiler alert, garment of the week was Rafe or Raf rather, which is this one. Okay. Um, which I, and I'm going to have my two penneth and then I'll let you, you guys uh, agree or disagree. But I thought that, I thought it was all right. It was, it wasn't bad, but we had quite a wonky, wonky bow on it. But the dirt on the back, so the girl could get into the dress, they had to rip the seam. And he did say he was going to add a bit more ease to Patrick, but that's bare threads. If you're gonna unpick it, tie those threads onto the back that is not quality sewing for garment of the week however on this occasion i felt poor old damien was robbed i thought i was convinced he was going to win i thought this was his show this dress is absolutely stunning i didn't think it was going to be up to much when he sort of said this is what i'm going to do i was like mm, really mm, fabric mm. but beautifully sewn the design suits his model. It fits perfectly. And yet you could see his surprise and you could see Raph's surprise as well that that won garment and that didn't. So, all right, that's my two penneth there. So, uh, Sam, discuss. Well, oh, you know what? I've got to go wow with Damien. I, do you know what? I was so impressed with that and so impressed, Sarah, that I'm actually going to make that because for him to produce that, it sounds like he's growing, he's learning, he's taking it all in. You know, it was absolutely amazing. And then we had Andrew and it was just lost, wasn't it? Andrew <laughs> was just a complete, absolute mess. So that was Andrew, that one in the middle there. Yeah. Yeah, but again, I mean, he okay. His his bow I his fell colours. off. I liked his design and I loved his colours, but that was that was a shame. But I have to agree with you. Would you put Raf's dress in a shop? You'd put it in a charity shop because that's where it belongs. Yeah, I didn't think it fitted with, great. With, yeah, but I mean, you'd put it in a charity shop. It looks like it was made from a curtain. Sorry, choice of material. That's my opinion. So um, we just mentioned briefly there Andrew's dress. This one, this one here, the purple yeah. with the big bows, and obviously um, one. Can I, just, can I just talk about what happened to Serena, poor thing, with all the yes. bubbles? The, yes, the, I know. The bubbles coming through. The, I mean, and I wasn't. Can I be honest with you? I wasn't sure about the shoulder pads. Was she thinking of Star Trek? <laughs> no, it was all about Eve, wasn't it? But we'll come. Oh, we'll come what Eve, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll come to uh, that very quick. I just want to talk very quickly before we go on about this okay. one because of those big bows. And Esme said, the bow's not part of the outfit. It's like, uh, but she loved the bow on race, but she didn't like the bows here. She said, it's not, 
it's not integral. But then she didn't say that about other times where we've seen big bows on fairies. But um, it just that was a that was a silly comment, to be honest. There, it wasn't. Yeah. It? I think it was kind of lining up that Andrew's going. That's what it was. So, um, Tracy, which yes. outfit did you really, really like? And which one didn't you like? Um, again, I thought Andrew's, yeah, was really nice. I think he did a really good job. I was a bit worried when I saw him. He seemed to be really heavily pressing that wool fabric. And I was like, oh, God, this is going to be a wavy. But he got away. Oh, sorry, not Andrew's. Damien's, I mean. Damien's, Damien's. sorry. Sorry. That's all right. I was just thinking, really? I don't no, know. no, no. Yeah, Damien's, yeah. I really like that one. Yeah, I thought that was really nice. It did, fitted the model really well, really suited her. Did kick up a little bit at the front, but nothing major. Um, Andrew's, the one we were just talking about with the bows, was just terrible. I mean, it's, it, it wasn't actually a difficult style to do. I know he was doing it in velvet, which is difficult, but if you're doing that, you need to be able to handle the fabric. And if you can't, just stay away from it. Choose something that you can handle, because that's going to be a really hard one to do. It's impractical. I hope you wouldn't be going out for dinner with those big bows. Can you imagine? And you'd have like all your dinner over your bows and everything. It just, yeah, just everything about it. It just shows his lack of skill, didn't it? If you can't handle that, that fabric, and he's done the simple style and everything, the zip wasn't lined up, the dark, weren't even you know it's got to be spot on if you're doing something like that um i thought um serena's right from the start what a hard thing to do working with satin like that in the sculptured shape it's really really hard to to pull off and to try and block fuse it which obviously didn't work well but you're going to see every little detail and it's going to make it look homemade very easily which it kind of did have that look about it she tried and you know she did a good job with the fabric she had but i would have avoided working with that on under those circumstances mm -hmm. of the pressure of tv um farah and you know she did a clever choice because it didn't really actually need that much fitting because it was all about the drape and the wrap around the middle so it wasn't really a made to measure she kind of got away with it she wasn't checking it on a model she knew that she didn't need to because of that wrap and the way it fits but you know i do really like her i do think when she gets it right she really does get it right but she missed that pleat on the front right at the front of the dress that's such an obvious that's the things that you really have to work out uh, make sure that you've got right that she didn't have a lot of other focus points on her dress but she did have that so that's where you, all her attention um, should have been what did you think of rebecca's tracy because i forgot um, about her i really liked hers i, yeah, liked I did her. really like it yeah i was a bit worried to start with i was thinking oh because well, if you've got to alter it then you've got um there's a lot of alteration to do because you're going to be doing it to two layers and if the lace doesn't quite lay flat but i think she pulled it off um i think she was lucky that it was a pretty standard size i think if it was a model that she'd had to do a lot of alterations she might have struggled um, the same with Damien's really I did really like the finished effect I was a bit when they pulled it out as garment of the week off the rail I was like oh, it's not even, it didn't look like it was lined I don't think it was even lined at all which of course we never see the inside of it and it wouldn't take much to have put a line in through that you know but they talked about um, Rebecca and how she'd hand stitched the binding around the top so if you are looking at those finishing details on Rebecca's and you should also mention that it wasn't actually done on the other dress, the gold dress, because it really, when they pulled it off the hanger, all you could see was kind of black and raw edges. And I was thinking, you know, are you judging? What, what are you looking at? Um, and, and going back to the gold one, surely, am I not missing it? Surely it just needed a longer zip going in there. Surely he just put a too short zip. That's why he couldn't get on the model because it was tight over the hip. He obviously just needed a longer zip and the problem was, was solved, which if you've made this before, you would realise that you, well, it's a pretty standard zip length that you need, 22 inches from your, you know, from your neck down. Always make sure you've got that length in. And then it's going to go over any hips. I've got bigger hips and certainly have you been used to fitting lots of women with, with bigger hips when we've done classes. And you just go for, for a longer zip and then you don't have to worry about that. You can always shoot that. What did, um, uh, Tracy was just talking there about Serena's and this fabric and how difficult that is to work with. What would you have, would you have suggested a different fabric for that sort of style of outfit? Because she said when the fabric arrived, it was a lot thinner than she was expecting, but I don't know why she would have expected it to be thicker and more structured. So she obviously had to then block it, but what would you have gone for? 
Well, there's different, um, there's, there's different, um, there's different types of um, <clears throat> satins. So for instance, if she'd used something more like a, um, I think if she'd used a Dupion silk, um, which has um, a natural um, little slugs in it that would have added some extra sort of detail and plus also it would have given it it would have enabled that um, item to have had some structure again if she had used a heavier <clears throat> the problem was her fabric came in it was too thin she should have addressed that and rather than it oh it's such an amazing color she should have ditched that fabric and found one with a heavier weight if she'd used a heavier weight satin anytime you're going to put fusing on which is a, a which is an iron a, an iron on fusing you're going to come into a lot of trouble because unless you actually use a dry iron she was steaming the hell out of it now what the the problem with using steam is the the heat of the iron um, activates the glue. When you start using steam, you're adding air pockets into um, the thing and you're deactivating the glue, which means it doesn't matter how much you go at it and press it afterwards, you're never going to get those bubbles out. What she could have done <clears throat> is she could have used a really lightweight poplin and she could have used a temporary adhesive spray and she could have actually sprayed that onto the fabric and then what that would have done is when she was sewing it it would have um it would have trapped the poplin with the the um the satin the temporary adhesive spray would have come away but it would not have altered the feel or the drape or the the end result of the satin or for instance rather than using a temporary adhesive spray um, you could, like I always say, for instance, when you're doing zips or anything like that, baste it all around, baste it all, and then actually uh, make it up. Um, it was a shame. I did think hers, I, th I thought hers was nice. Um, <clears throat> but I do, I do agree with the fact that um, uh, Rafe's, I just... Uh, when I saw him putting over the, um, the model, now for instance, I've done copious amounts of fashion shows. And for instance, when we put things down the runway, we don't have time to sometimes, because the design has changed. It's not because we can't be bothered, but things go down. When you look at the big catwalks like Louis Vuitton and, place, and, and Vivian Westwood, half of those garments like coats and stuff like that don't actually have a lining because they've been altering them right up until the last minute. It's just to get the picture and on the catwalk. But Rafe had another problem, which was the shoulders. That needed picking up completely because that um, neckline was too far. It was sat too far down. It should have actually, if you looked, I just kept on thinking this really just looks odd because it was really narrow on the shoulder and it just needed picking up to, to um to sort out the balance of, of that whole top half. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think his was, I was just so shocked when they revealed the garment of the week because I mm -hmm. thought Damien should have won. Now, yeah. calling it, calling Damien's a party dress. It wasn't. I'm just going to use my imagination and see that I'm, I'm just imagining that it's an office party he designed that for. Yeah. Um, but literally, I thought his execution and the way that he had that wool so flat and so tailored and just skimming off the body that was just absolutely beautiful and with that whole zip that zip lay flat it wasn't going like this it was just it was just very hmm, i missed her really this at the end i just thought i'm i'm not really um what have you uh rebecca's i actually <laughs> thought was actually um was actually quite nice i thought it was very simple I thought it needed it needed something else. The the dress itself, it it was nice. It was very well executed, but it needed it needed there just was something missing. I don't know what was missing, but there was just something missing. Maybe I quite like hers, Alistair. I tell you why mm. I liked it because sometimes you can have a simple dress to let that fabric show itself off. So mm. I think the, the fabric choice for hers was really good um, and I think I th maybe it could have had a trim around the neck or something Do it just needed I mean? something yeah. extra yeah. just to yeah. it just needed to lift that fabric to showcase that fabric 
because it was quite a small concentrated fabric going all the way around, you needed something else. And it doesn't need a bow, Esme, right? <laughs> no bow. <laughs> so obviously this week um Andrew went and I think we're all agreed that that was the that was the the right choice. Um but I personally felt and I think we've touched on this a number of times that there is sort of a judging uneven playing field, you know, when when they look at something on one outfit and not on the other bow, not bow, um, whether it's design or sewing. This is not a design competition. This is a sewing competition. So having those loose threads, I'm sorry, that's not garment of the week. Um, and it's almost like the producers and the, um, the judges have already decided who's going to be in the final. Now, next week, we have the quarterfinals. And it is movie week. I am very excited about this one. I love it when we do movie week. And the challenges, hang on, let me find my, my, my notes. We've got a dirty dancing themed pattern challenge. Oh my goodness, that is so in my wheelhouse. Uh, the transformation is a sort of sound of music style transformation where we're turn where they're turning curtains into play clothes for kiddies and the made to measure dream girl so we've got a lot of glamour next week so first of all just before we wrap up i want to ask tracy who do you think and it may be who do you think deserves to win compared to who is going to win because that may be two yeah. different different people so very quickly if you can just tell us who uh, you think is going to win and who should? Well, I think um, it, it, I think Serena is, you know, she's consistent and precise. You know, if you're, if you're judging it purely on sewing, then yes, you know, I think she, she should. I would have liked one of the outsiders up until yesterday. I really liked Farry. You know, I still do. I think she's, you know... I think she's a contender and I do like some of the stuff that Raf has done, but I think this week he let himself down. So yeah, I'm going with Serena to win, uh, but I would like Farry if she can get herself together. Cause when she does, she does really good work. So if she can just carry on on that, you know, and she slipped back this week, but if she could pick it back up again, I think she's in with a good chance as well. So um, Sam, last week you said Rafe, Serena and Farry. Who are you thinking uh, going forward? Have you changed your opinion or? Yeah, I have because I have to agree with Tracy. But you know what? I think there's a big chance that Serena could win. But why give up a medical profession? I mean, what's she going to do when she does win? So do you know what I mean? And then you've got Raf, and then you've got Farry. And of course, we know that Rebecca's going to be gone next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think it depends on what Farry does, to be honest, because I think yeah. Farry, Farry could be out. But um, I think the, the assumption is, though, that when somebody wins Sewing B, that they, they suddenly have a career. And as we know, because we do know a lot of bees, that's not, that's not the case. Um, yeah. So I don't think I don't think that um, she'll be giving up the medical profession anytime soon. But I, personally, I think Serena, yeah, I think Serena, Rafe and Farry... <laughs> Um, and I think I think the judges look to me like they're going to choose Raf as the winner. Well, um, I, I, did, I did predict that, but because he lies so much, I just feel... <laughs> <laughs> you know, we now know that he's made a bloody shirt for somebody that doesn't sew. Yes, he did say early on that he had um, taken up sewing during lockdown, and then he said he made something for... I think it was Pride in 2018. So, you know, maybe maybe a, a bending of the truth there. But Alistair, last week you said uh, Raf, Andrew and Serena. Obviously, Andrew went and he did. Unfortunately, it was his week to go this week. And I think we all agreed on that. Who do you think going forward? Who do you think are your three favourites? And who do you think will win over who should? Well, I'll be honest with you, I don't have any favourites. Um, <laughs> Alistair! <laughs> sorry. Um, but um, I think if I'm going to, if I'm just going to look at the production value of it, I think, to be honest, it's going to be between 
it's going to be between Serena, Farry, and Rafe. And yeah. to be honest, there's there's no point in me putting Damien in there because obviously once oh. um, potentially Rebecca potentially going next week or it will be Damien because they'll just call him out on the fact that he hasn't read the pattern and he could have had a couple of bomb, um, you, you know, um, first couple of challenges and then he'll be out. So I, I predict next week um, it will potentially be Rebecca and Damien out and it will be those three. I'm just waiting on the... I, it's such a shame because you almost think, oh, well, I don't really need to watch the next episodes because we already know what's going to happen. It's yeah. a bit sort of like, um, I don't know. And if Damien, if Damien can sew that beautifully and wow. not win to something that's sewn not beautifully, the poor guy doesn't stand a chance. No, so, you need anyway, a fairy yeah. godmother to sort of yeah. like, you know, just sort of go in here, don't use that fabric. Here, have this, yeah. you know. Stay away from the trim. Exactly. Brilliant. They should cage that area, I think. <laughs> should be passcoded. You know, what are you here for, sir? You know. <laughs> Yeah, keep him away from the sparklies. Well, <laughs> thank you very much, everybody, for joining um, us again. So thank you, Tracy, for um, giving us your knowledge and experience and opinions, and Alistair and Sam. Now, do very quickly remember, we have two competitions this week. We have the giveaway from Sam, which is Fabric and Patterns. And to get that, you comment here, you comment underneath, um, whether you're watching in YouTube or Facebook, comment underneath this post. And the other one is the amazing competition to get your own design of fabric made. And for that, you go to the Create and Craft Facebook page. There's a post there. Click on it and that will take you through the application where you can upload your drawings, your sketches or your thoughts. You know, just you don't have to be an artist. Just uh, fill in the information and upload an image and then you could be in with a chance of winning £250 worth of sewing goodies. So please do join us here again next week when we will be uh, behind the scenes and picking apart uh, the judging. <laughs> it's so easy for us to judge because we're not there. <laughs> but, um, we're going to be judging um, the outfits from Movie Week. So we will see you next week. Thank you again for joining us. And bye-bye. <laughs>